Rooster Teeth News is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Go to berries.com for an awesome Valentine's Day gift. Get freshly dipped strawberries for just $19.99 when you click on the microphone and enter code RTNEWS. Hey guys, I'm Ashley Jenkins and Sega has announced their next Sonic game for release later this year titled Sonic Boom. As you might expect, since it shares the name with the previously announced animated TV series headed to Cartoon Network, it will be a new branch of the Sonic franchise. The characters have all got a new look that appears to involve a lot of athletic tape, and the game narrative will serve as a prequel to the story of the TV series. Sega is betting big on this new evolution of Sonic. In addition to the games and the TV series, it will have a full line of licensed merchandise including toys, novelty items, food and drink, and everything else under the sun. Sega of America President John Chang confirms the company's dedication, saying, We are committed to supporting this initiative to provide great entertainment to fans for all aspects of their lives. The game will be a Nintendo exclusive appearing on 3DS and Wii U and completes Sega's three-game deal with Nintendo following the other exclusives, Mario & Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Winter Olympic Games and Sonic Lost World. Earlier this week, we reported on the possible leak of a 2015 multi-platform Sonic game, which Sega has denied. Community manager Kelly Parker responded to the rumors, saying, Sega has yet to announce details of upcoming console video games for Sonic the Hedgehog or further details regarding the new Sonic CG TV series. But since Sega's deal with Nintendo will be completed this year, chances are the next title will branch out to other platforms after all. Next, Respawn Entertainment co-founder Vince Zampella, who is a fountain of information about Titanfall, has stated that the upcoming beta for the game will not be open. Similar to the alpha that took place last month, participation will require a code, though he has gone on to say that they intend to add as many participants as possible using multiple waves to ensure the beta remains in working order. Previously, it was revealed that a pre-order will not be required to participate, but on the subject of whether those who have pre-ordered will have access, Zampella says, We'd like to make sure pre-orders get codes, but not sure if we can. But they're working on it. The date for the beta also hasn't been confirmed, though a French retailer put up posters claiming it would begin on the 14th. Respawn needs to put a build through certification before they feel confident in announcing the date, but with less than five weeks remaining until the game's release, we probably won't have much longer to wait. Well, unless you're on Xbox 360. Activision has just announced that while the Xbox One and PC versions are still on track for March 11th for North America and March 13th for Europe, Bluepoint's Xbox 360 version won't be out until March 25th in North America and March 28th in Europe. And while we're continuing reports, Ubisoft has successfully recovered the trademark for Watch Dogs, which was mistakenly marked as abandoned by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office at the beginning of the week after someone impersonated Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimot and forged an express abandonment application, which resulted in the initial abandonment. Once a trademark has been listed as abandoned, it can only be reinstated if the now defunct trademark holder submits a petition demonstrating extraordinary circumstances. Apparently, having a forger file documents on your behalf counts as extraordinary because the USPTO has approved the petition and the trademark has been successfully returned to Ubisoft, though the abandonment will remain part of its record. And on a completely different note, have you heard of Flappy Bird? If so, it's either because you're addicted or because someone you used to know plays it obsessively. Well, it turns out that in spite of being a free game, it's pulling in an estimated $50,000 per day for creator Dong Wen. The game has no cost, no microtransactions. The revenue comes purely from the game's persistent banner ads, which don't generate much individually, but with more than 50 million downloads of the game, it really adds up. Wen created the game in a few days during the evenings after he got home from work, and he believes the game's success comes from its brutal simplicity. He says, People in the same classroom can play and compete easily because it is simple to learn, but you need skill to get a high score and don't expect to see a future version that offers a banner-free gaming experience at a cost. He has no plans to change it. Flappy Bird has reached a state where anything added to the game will ruin it somehow, so I'd like to leave it as is, he explains. And that's the big news for today. Have you fallen down the rabbit hole of Flappy Bird? What's your high score? Let us know in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com for the latest episode of The Patch, where we share our own Flappy Bird progress.